Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show Google uh, Kubernetes uh, cluster federation. Cluster federation is a way of uh, federating your uh, existing clusters as one single Kubernetes cluster. So if you have clusters in different zones or different uh, uh, um, countries, you can basically um, treat all of them as one single cluster. And using a federated cluster. So I'm going to show how to deploy a federated cluster on top of um, existing uh, Kubernetes clusters or maybe I'll create new ones. So for this uh, Kelsey Hightower from Google uh, has created a nice uh, repo. It's pretty easy to follow this repo. Um, that's what I'm going to do. In the first step uh, we are going to provision Kubernetes clusters Second step, we are going to generate some cube config files and whatever files are necessary for uh, the newly created federation cluster uh, to be able to join other uh, clusters that we have. And also a DNS name that is required for the uh, federation cluster to create uh, and host your services. Um, We'll, we'll use uh, Google DNS managed service, but this can be um, AWS like uh, Route 53 as well, as far as I know. And also, um, we'll have the latest Kubernetes client downloaded here. Once we do that, um, all we need to do is uh, we need to provision a namespace for deploying. Uh, the new deploying the federation cluster that we want to um, create in one of the existing core clusters. So we'll choose one randomly or we'll choose whatever is there on the tutorial. And then we need to deploy two modules here. One is federated API and uh, another one is federated control manager. Um, so these two pieces we need to deploy and also after we deploy these two uh, modules, we need to join existing clusters into the uh, federation cluster using this step. So with that, uh, we'll go and get started. So provisioning Kubernetes clusters, uh, I've already set up my Google um, CLI here. So if I do gcloud container cluster list, I don't have any container uh, clusters that are provisioned. So I'm going to provision four uh, Kubernetes clusters, uh, one in each of these zones like Asia East one, Europe West and US East and then US Central one. So all these, all these four I'm going to provision. So before I do that, I need to clone this repo. I've already cloned this repo and then I'm inside the Kubernetes cluster federation. Um, Okay, and let me see into that. I've already cloned it, so I'm gonna cd into that folder so you can see this is what I have. So I'm going to pull the latest one and then go with provisioning clusters. So four clusters steps are there here. You can just copy paste them. Pretty straightforward. And then let me do here as well. The second one. And the third one again. Just to make it faster. So I'm provisioning four clusters now. So hold on for a few minutes. This will take a couple of minutes. As you can see, one is in East of uh, Asia East, and the second one is Europe West, and then US East, and then US Central. So in among these four clusters, we are going to choose US Central one to deploy the Federation cluster. But this can be 
outside these clusters as well. It doesn't need to be in the same cluster. Alright, so once I have this, I'm going to execute this and see if I have clusters or not. This will take a couple of minutes. And let's go back and then open this uh, create cluster secrets and manifest. If we go through this, there are two types of configuration files that you need to create. Um, so this, this is getting the credentials for each of these Kubernetes clusters, the cube configs and also cluster configs. So we need to generate cube config and then cluster config. This cluster config are used for um, joining the existing clusters into the federation cluster. So let's see what, what is happening here. It's still going on. So give it a few seconds. I'm going to pause this here. And I cannot pause this. Okay. So once I generate um, cube config and again uh, cluster configurations <coughs> files, uh, those will be stored inside the current folder. And using those files, we will basically um, join the existing cluster. So this, this step is to gen only generate these uh, cluster files and con like cube config files. Hopefully I have uh, resources. Let me check my if I go to my compute engine you can see the servers are getting provisioned. Each cluster has about uh, three servers. One will be master and other two will be nodes I believe. Um, so we just provisioning about 12 servers here. And you can see these are all in different zones, Asia, Europe, US, Central and uh, US East. So the first cluster is up. Let's see the second one, third one and fourth one. So in order to see the progress, I can just say Google container cluster list. I have four of them turning now. So let me clear this. You can see two of them in our running state and then two of them in our provision state. So Asia and the and US Central are ready now. Let this get completed. Alright, let's get started with the generating cube config files. So this is how you generate uh, cube config files for each of the cluster. Since east is already ready, I'm going to generate one more to go. Yes, all of, all of the clusters are running. And, um, so and they are ready to take workloads. So you can actually talk to each individual cluster and deploy, but you will not have a disaster recovery scenario for your application. So what I'm going to do is um, deploy federation cluster. For that, I need to generate kube configs and then cluster, cluster uh, config files. So first step. So same is the case for others. And you can see all of them are basically generated. So when you generate like that, it will be stored inside a location, a specific location. Let me uh, filter that so you can see
we can filter with uh, GCE so you only see those so you can see there are four um, configuration files that are generated cube config files and uh, this is the format of that file <coughs> and um, the core project inside google cloud is basically the project that is uh, created inside your google cloud so nothing fancy so i'm using this uh, project to layer configuration now and then i'm going to generate uh, cluster configurations And this is one line and this is another line so keep that in mind so when i say use context it is going to use the east uh, context and then i'm going to generate the asia server address so when i say cube cubes cube ctl config use context uh, among the four configurations that we have it is going to use the east uh, configuration then I got the Asia server address where we echo you can see Asia server address this is the Asia cluster um, address and I'm going to um, create these YAML files uh, from the by by creating these cluster objects so uh, we'll use we'll use the Asia server address inside the cluster object like this so um, for each cluster we need to generate this cluster object and later we have to import this cluster object into federation cluster that's the reason so i'm going to create this and you can see clusters we have one file that is generated i mean one file which is not empty um, so this is uh, gc east one so this is the one we have okay cool and then just a small check Or it's same thing with uh, other this is just minifying that we need to do the same thing for other uh, clusters as well so Europe and then generate the file inside cluster folder minify your central and then generate the file for us central minify and us east That's it. So we have generated cube config files and also cluster config files. These files will be used later um, by to join these uh, existing Kubernetes clusters into the federation cluster. Okay. Next step is creating a GCE DNS managed zone. Um, so let's say you have a, a domain name that you can use as a pointer to the federation cluster so this is what i use um, so you can create it from here inside in, in the console um, from the cli or you can just go to the google cloud network and then um, cloud dns and you can create it from here as well create dns zone so when you create the dns zone like this um, all you need all you get is <clears throat> the name servers here 
okay so name servers you don't get all of these other in the services but you get these two entries here one is the name server entries and the um, other is the so um, source of uh, soa uh, records as well so these entries you need to make sure you use these name servers inside your uh, dns provider so let's say i have a dns name uh, with uh, namecheap so in the namecheap i'm going to configure one of the um like the i63 io to name server uh, pointing to these name servers so i have pointed federation.i63.io to um, these name servers so whatever that traffic that goes to fed.i63.io will be routed to these name servers here okay um, or at least whatever um, google dns will be used here so that's the uh, small uh, part that you need to do uh, before you actually go ahead with the progression cluster deployment so to simplify that all you need to do is in your dns uh, in your domain name provider maybe like godaddy or namecheap you need to make an entry um, for fed.i63.io you need to point the name servers to these servers here that's all you need to do so i've chosen this but you can choose anything else okay um so i've already done this step so i'm going to skip that and then download kubernetes client this is pretty straightforward um you just uh, based on your environment you copy that and paste it in your uh, local path uh, pretty straightforward nothing to discuss here i've already done that so i'm going to skip that and then <coughs> Like I said, among the four names, four Kubernetes cluster, we are going to choose one of the Kubernetes cluster for hosting federation cluster. Okay, so in this example, um, Kelsey has chosen uh, US Central for that. So we are going to use the same thing. Um, for that, we need the GCP project name once again. And then this federation.yml uh, that if you see it is simply creating a namespace nothing else so let's go and take a look ns uh, federation.yml this is just creating namespace so nothing fancy at all okay so let's go and create that Give it a few seconds. So it is been it is basically using the central uh, cube config file to connect to the central um, f uh, Kubernetes cluster and create a namespace called Federation there. So if I do a get namespaces here, I'll see Federation as a newly created namespace. Okay. And these are all the default namespaces. So once I have the namespace to deploy the federation cluster, federation um, cluster, I need to deploy these two. <coughs> One is federation API server, and the other is federation control manager. So let's go and uh, create federation API server. Okay. Now for that, you need to have the GCP project name. So have it and um, you can see services and then federation api server dot yml and um, so this is going to deploy is a uh, api server um, module like here and um, this is just going to create service and then later on it will go into do a deployment as well so let me let us take a look inside this uh, is federation server api server dot yml I'm going to just open this again and then show it so that's clear now. and then services and then federation api server so you can see it is basically creating a load balancer uh, so it's basically getting a ip address uh, for the federation cluster and uh, it is routing to 
an app called Federation Cluster. Okay. Um, that's it. So let's go and uh, create that. So service has been created. So if we take a look in uh, get SVC, you can see it. Of course, it goes to the default uh, namespace. So you can see um, it has created a service called Federation API server, and it also is getting an external IP. Uh, it's in pending state, so give it a few seconds before it gets the IP address. <coughs> now this is what um, it is showing. So give it uh, a few seconds. We need to see the external IP here. Meanwhile, let me close this. So I got a external IP here. This is useful later, so that's the reason I'm I'm showing here. Okay, so once I have this um, service IP address, we did not we did still not uh, deploy the API server yet. Okay, we only deployed the service which is going to be attached to this API server. Um, another important thing that we need to do is um, we need to edit this file, create our own custom secret. I'm going to use the default one. There's nothing fancy there. So it just says change me. This is this is something you need to change. I'm gonna see keep it as it is. And after that, we need to generate a secret from this uh, file that that is given here inside the same federation namespace. So now if you see um, service comma secrets, you can see one secret is created here. Okay. <coughs> okay. And you can also describe it and then see it's not necessary. Uh, we also need a position volume claim for the federation cluster um, for to store all the state of the cluster. So if you go take a look in the PVC Federation Server API at CD, this is a person volume claim asking for storage. So the type object is Federation volume claim, persistent volume claim. Um, so your cluster needs to have persistent volume already set up. Okay, and it is using 10 GB of data uh, of uh, disk space. So let's go and uh, create that. So persistent volume claim is created. Let's see if the claim is bound or not. So it is bound. It, it got the 10 GP data which um, disk which it, it asked for. Okay. <coughs> and then um, the next thing is deploy actual federation uh, API server. So we only created service and then required uh, the disk but we all we need to deploy the federation api server now so for that it needs to know the ip address um, you have already seen the service service ip address that that we got there this is a shortcut for that uh, getting that server server uh, api service service um, ip address so 132.76, this is same as whatever we have seen um, here, this IP address, okay. And in deployments federation API server, um, you also need to edit this section, like uh, in the in this section, in the federation API server, YML has a reference for this API server. Okay, so if we go take a look in deployments, that is why we are actually fetching the IP address here. So in this Federation API server, 
there is a section for advertise address that needs to be replaced with the IP address. So you can just uh, execute this address. Uh, you don't need to go and change it manually. And then finally create the deployment. So deployment and federation server YML. So small change that um, you need to do uh, on uh, this this part, which is not available inside the Kelsey's repo, is basically update the cube, cube hypercube version from 1.4.0 to 1.5.2. Um, this is because if you are having 1.4.0, you may not be use you may not be able to use some um, features like uh, config maps and all okay so change this version to 1.5.2 wherever you see so you can see it in only in deployments folder so just go and change it inside deployments folder okay so what I'm going to do is check for wherever um, you have 1.4.0 So there are two places you have. So I'm going to replace 1.4.0 with uh, 1.5.2. That's it. And same is the case with uh, Federation controller as well. <coughs> Even if you make don't make this change, it still works, but you will have an incorrect version. Okay, so that's all I, I made the changes. Uh, next thing is I'm going to deploy API server. That is the first deployment. And then I verify deployments whether the application got deployed or not. Looks like it got, it got triggered. Let's see if it is really running anything. So it is still getting deployed so I'm double check the versions there Okay, Federation API server is running fine. The next thing is deploying. Uh, actually, let's double check. Okay, parts, these are running fine. The next thing is de uh, deploying the Federation Controller Manager. This is also pretty straightforward. Run these commands. You don't need to do this, you already run this piece. Again, getting the Federation API server address, and then um, you need this address to in the next step here. With the token as well. So we are setting the context for federation cluster. So now we are asking kubectl to talk to the federation cluster.
now we are going to deploy uh, federation controller manager there is a small catch here before you trigger kick off the deployment you need to edit this file to match the exact federation that you have um, so if you go so this is a DNS name right the zone name that you created so this should match with the values that you have so in this um, DNS provider if I go click on cloud DNS you can see federation zone name is zone name is federation which is okay with this step but the next one um, DNS name is fed.iscc.io whereas I have a different value so I'm going to change this So this is the only change that you need to do for as far as uh, federation controller dep manager deployment is concerned okay so once you have done that change you need to go check and um, just do a deployment again and uh, look for okay this is already pulled and it is running fine so this is all you need to do um, to make your a kubernetes cluster a federation cluster working okay now let's go and see if we have a cluster working fine or not um sorry one more step is we have deployed the federation cluster but we have to join the existing clusters inside the federation cluster so that is the final step so before we start let, let us take a look here if we do kubectl clusters you don't have any clusters joined inside the federation cluster okay so using the configuration files that we created the cluster configuration file that we created in the beginning we need to join these um, existing kubernetes clusters into into this federation cluster so this is a step it does all of these pieces pretty straightforward just execute this So you can see the it is referring to the cube configs that we generated and to the corresponding folder that it has. So we created the secret and then we create the cluster object inside Federation cluster. That's it. So two two steps for each of the cluster. Create the secret and then create the cluster object. The cluster object is a key for joining your existing clusters in, inside the Federation cluster. Now, if I do a get clusters I can see all four here okay one of them is unknown give it a couple of seconds so that it will sync let's check back after some time it should be working fine Okay, so we have a federation cluster which which is actually um, orchestrating all of the Kubernetes clusters. Okay, so um, since we have the uh, federation cluster in uh, working fine, let's go and deploy a nginx service. Okay, and uh, see how how that is getting deployed inside. Uh, how we are getting the DNS names inside. Um, federation cluster so these all DNS names that you see are from my old records I'm gonna delete those so you don't get confused so let me delete so this is plain empty um, DNS records now so when I deploy something inside the federation cluster using the federation cluster it is going to deploy across all the clusters based on your number of instances that you want to run it is going to deploy 
corresponding um, instances into ac across the uh, zones. But you can also choose which zone you, you want to deploy that is totally flexible. Okay. Um, let me go here and then take take the example of Nginx uh, service. So we are going to deploy a Nginx instance. And you can see all four of them are ready now. Um, let's go and deploy a replica set of Nginx. All right, now if we look at the replica set here. We have Nginx uh, running. Now, um, this Nginx desired set is four, um, as we have seen here. So these four can go anywhere inside those four clusters. So it two might be on one, one cluster and uh, two might be on um, different clusters. So it, that's totally random now but you can basically uh, choose on which clusters you can deploy using some metadata okay for now we do not put any metadata it is pretty straightforward nginx uh, deployment so we don't know where where this goes so if i go check in central i have one running all right and um, i might have others running in different um, zones and let's go back and look at the refresh the zones here. You should have records here. Um, I'm not sure I have done any mistake. Give it a couple of seconds and let's come back. Um, all right, so we have one running inside uh, US Central. You can um, you can confine your de pod deployments to specific zones using these clusters uh, metadata here. Okay, in, in the annotations, you can basically specify which zone you can you want to uh, deploy. Okay, oh, we, we only generated, uh, yeah, so the reason why we did not see any entries here is we just created replica sets. We did not create the service yet. So service is, is a service is what exposes this replica set or parts outside the um, cluster using the using a load balancer or something okay so that's the reason we did not see any entries here so let's go and create a service so if we go take a look inside the uh, service description here for the nginx you can see it basically says load balancer and then it is targeting uh, nginx uh, selector here okay so we have deployed the replica set using this label so it is going to the service is going to point traffic to these parts okay so four parts which are inside the um, um, four clusters it may be in anywhere so once when i create this it should create an entry inside the dns uh, zones here so give it a few seconds and you can see it has already created entries for different zones. So this is a federation um, DNS name. So this DNS name is highly available. Um, so even if one zone completely goes down where we have the deployment, traffic will be served from any other available zone so like this one. Okay. So we can use this as the main domain name for, for accessing this service but if you want to access individual um, areas you can just go and then use those um, DNS names but by default it, you always you always be recommended to use this uh, DNS name because that is the DNS is highly available 
and also um, locally routable so if you have something running close to you um, you will get response from, response from that closer part that is running uh, not, not to the farther one so it, it has all the inbuilt capabilities there so let's go and take a look uh, on this uh, give it a few seconds after the deployment is done we need to wait a couple of seconds so that the requests get updated correctly um, or let me also check if I have done anything wrong so default federation SPC Let's check individual areas. So you can see Asia East one is running. Euro West is also running. The central is also running so it is distributed across these uh, areas I'm going to type from UR uh, CLI. Sometimes these are DNS updates, so it would take uh, first time it would take a couple of uh, minutes or maybe seconds, I guess. Even uh, even last time I have deployed, I've seen there. We'll give uh, a couple of minutes and then check back again. So you can see um, this DNS name is now pointed to the uh, records which are basically the service IP address for each of these zone. So 152 this is a zone it is getting pointed 159 this is a zone it is um, service IP address for this zone it is getting updated here. So this IP this DNS name is becoming a highly available um, DNS name right. And let's go and uh, test it here on the zero speaker. This might give more accurate results. So it is pinging from different areas and then we can see Linux is coming up on different uh, areas. So it is not coming from my laptop because I don't have the DNS records updated I believe but you can see um, it has records available from literally every area um, in the world. Okay. So I need to wait for a few minutes uh, before I uh, get updates on this uh, area. Okay. 
uh, with that I'm going to conclude uh, this demo and also in the next uh, video I'm going to show a demo which is uh, specific to uh, again a Nginx instance which has capability to tell you where it is serving from uh, that way it is more clear on how how um, how it behaves like how customer federation behaves um, when uh, things go wrong when when there is a disaster recovery situation how does things um, behave so that kind of uh, understandability you will get it uh, inside the, in the next video thank you very much for watching